particular type of mushroom will grow on straw, as we see here, or will grow on aged wood chips. This little uh, mushroom garden will last three to five years, and every few years I'll put a, a little bit of fresh mycelium in here. So I get my mycelium from a, uh, a laboratory that specializes in mushrooms. So it's lab grade mycelium. I know just what I'm buying. Uh, and then I introduce it to uh, like we see the bed every once in a while. Does anybody have something in your yard that looks kind of like this? It does look a little bit like a banana tree, but it never gets much taller than this. This is a canna lily, and it's used commonly in landscaping. <clears throat> but this is not just a canna lily. This is the edible canna lily, a tulip, the only edible canna lily. And uh, in uh, Australia, it's called Queensland arrowroot because you eat the root and you use it as a uh, thickener and as a starch. And it also has the added benefit of the young shoots when they first come up out of the ground can be steamed like asparagus. So oh, this wow. is the edible canna lily, and then uh, the bean is a little warmer uh, and um, not quite as spicy. Um, so this is cardamom ginger, and uh, uh, this cardamom is actually used uh, mostly the young leaves in cooking. Uh, here where you're standing right now, discovered that this plant contains caffeine. And uh, it is Yerba Mate's North American cousin, and it has as much caffeine as coffee. I can take these leaves right here and dry roast them in a, a dry frying pan, just like you would dry roast green coffee beans. And I can make myself a really nice cup of coffee with it. In the same way with Yerba Mate, Yerba Mate will actually meet its South American cousin here in a minute. So. Um, so scientifically speaking, Yerba Mate is Elix parmigesis. Elix means holly. All the hollies are in that Elix family. And so this is Elix vomitoria. You think, vomitoria? Where did they get that weird name? Well, I told you the Indians used it, right? So not only did they use it like we use uh, coffee as an everyday drink, but they also use it as an important ceremonial hey, drink. And then the powers to be within the tribe would fast. And then they would drink real copious amounts, real strong brews of this until they hurl. Oh. And then whoever hurled last got to make the important decision. <laughs> <laughs> Chief Osceola's name actually implies something to the effect of Champion Yupon drink. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so bamboo is a grass, right? And it's the fastest growing plant, uh, as far as I know, on the planet. Look at this bamboo shoot right here. These two. See right here? Yeah. Alright, well these two are so young, they've never gotten their first leaf. Which we're going to talk about again in a minute. We've got chilo, which makes a wonderful tea. We've got aloe, which has um, been used since biblical times and before. We've got rosemary, which is a wonderful thing. It has all sorts of medicinal qualities to it. We've got stevia, and we've got yarrow, and we've got feverfew. Oh, here's another wild one. There's another wild edible for you, and it actually has some medicinal values too. The flowers come in white and purple, you know that? So this, uh, this little leaf... So this little leaf and this little flower is our wild viola, and uh, the wild viola has edible flowers. <clears throat> this tree here is a fig tree, so this is brown turkey fig. This is the one that you would find around the old Florida homesteads, kind of an old tried and true in Florida. So actually along this road, there's about five different varieties of figs. We met uh, brown turkey. This is Kodoto. This is white marsala. Both uh, French culinary figs and Thomas Jefferson fell in love with figs when he traveled to France. And he brought some back and planted them in Monticello. And these figs are from, uh, from that uh, uh, 